this one's gonna be a tough one and i'm not really sure if i'm going to post it i just want to talk and just kind of share my thoughts and after watching this show on netflix binge watching i should say i was laying in bed having some financial conversations with myself and i decided to click on the how to get rich uh tv show by ramit sethi i felt motivated to get out of bed and to just share my financial situation it's one of my goals to be able to manage my money better so i felt like if this podcast if this channel is anything it's vulnerability being able to talk about anything and everything and um just the way people are open in that show how to get rich encouraged me to be open about my expenses and to share with the public um what it is that i go through financially in order to encourage others to make e making better money decisions or to even help me um if you're out there and you are somebody who manages their money um in such a great healthy way i encourage you to message me and to give me some pointers but i do want to kind of speak about my financial um management um techniques and just kind of show you guys how i feel i am trying to work towards the goal of managing my money better i started off writing stuff down before i moved into this apartment i knew there was going to be um this change this shift in managing my money and being able to enjoy still some sort of money and when i first came into this apartment i made sure that i would use a quadrant to kind of put down in every single paycheck since i get paid uh, weekly um pull away for my rent with that being said everything else for those same quadrants i split for the bills that came in so then it, everything was okay in the beginning of the month and uh, in the beginning of me moving in here the few months but i decided to pursue a different career so i went from being a full-time server i'm still a full-time server technically i still work 40 hours but i decided to also invest my weekends instead of going to the restaurant and making money there which if you are in the restaurant industry you know that as a server bartender whatever it is that you are doing in the restaurant industry, you make money on the weekends. So I started to kind of sacrifice my Saturdays, my Sundays, my Fridays, even sometimes in order for me to be able to put some time into real estate, grow my business in real estate so I can eventually become a full-time real estate agent. And that made me kind of, stuck i can't find a better word but it kind of disoriented me because i had already had a set check and payment for every quadrant and you know everything that i needed to pay for these four quadrants was set in place and i didn't have to touch it you know it's how it came every month is how it got paid so losing out on maybe 300 to 400 dollars a day took a big toll on me and it caused me to have to reevaluate all of my expenses, cut down on subscriptions. One good app that I downloaded in order for me to see where my money was going into was Rocket Money. That app helped me narrow down what is valuable to keep in subscriptions, what is not. And for the most part, all of my subscriptions got canceled. I could not and would not be willing to pay $15, $14 a month for a subscription if it meant, you know, you need those extra $15 for gas, for food. And I want to be completely transparent with you guys because I feel like 
a lot of people deal with financial instability sometimes or they don't know how to manage their money and they'll be making a great salary, a great hourly, but they just put the money in the wrong places and I am one of those people. So a couple days ago, I think maybe a week ago, I decided to reevaluate because I was I was just kind of avoiding the situation with my money. I turned a blind eye and I was just paying things off and whatever money I had left in my bank account, I said, okay, well, this is what I'm gonna use for, you know, shenanigans, to go out, to buy food. And that is one of my biggest things. My bad habit is buying food um, to pay for gas, to be able to just splurge. And I had to stop that. I had to really take control of my finances, especially after even just setting those three goals and talking about money management and what I needed to do. And don't get me wrong, it's been tough. I've made silly decisions. Uh, one of them being that I spent money on two concert tickets that cost me $1,800, knowing I don't have $1,800 in my bank account. But you know, we have these apps that you can do installment payments and that's exactly what I did. I wanted to treat my significant other. I wanted to make sure that we had a nice little trip. I, my excuse was that I haven't had a trip the whole month or the whole year, I'm sorry. Um, and I wanted to be able to kind of just go out of my way and, and treat myself and include my partner in it. And that kind of bit me in the ass. And the reason why is because it turns out my partner doesn't want to go, it's not his scene, whatever the case is. And it bothered me. I was super annoyed the whole day today about it. Um, that it just made me feel like, why did I do that? You know, and I had to really sit down with myself and say, why would you spend money just carelessly? Because that's really what it comes down to. It's not, I can't blame him for it not being his scene um, I was really annoyed that, you know, he agreed to go and then all of a sudden it became not his scene. I was really annoyed that, you know, it wasn't an honest, hey, that's not my scene. I don't think I would be, you know, willing to go with you to go watch Drake. But if you want, you can do that with your friend. At the end of the day, I made the silly decision to buy those tickets um, and listen to the yeah yeah let's go um you know him encouraging me to you know i want to go with you and then me encouraging him like if i buy the tickets will you go um and it, i just got so caught up in the feeling in the moment and that's where my careless um spending comes into play and what i should have done is had more discernment with the decisions i make with my finances and really check myself is this going to hurt me in the long run if i you know take this money out in in a loan or in, in a fine in a you know installment payments will this benefit me now that this person can't go now that this person has officially told me that it's not his scene and that he would much rather just not do it and the only reason he said yes is because he wanted me to be happy i lost out on 800 1800 dollars but it lets me know I can't allow myself to get caught up in the moment of careless spending or the emotion of like, yeah, we're having fun. Yeah, the feeling is great. Yeah, we're out. Yeah, you know, they're willing to do it with me. If you go out and party with friends and you waste $600 on bottles, can't blame your friends for drinking the bottles. You bought them, you were in, this, in the scene, you were having a good time, you wanted everyone to have a good time and now nobody paid you, you should have been more careful with how you spent your money. And that's what I keep telling myself. I should have, you know, kind of sit myself back and reevaluated my finances and said, is this going to actually benefit me or not? Um, and so that kind of situation led me to even want to start this talk in front of the camera, whether I post it or not, you know, because it's something that I want to officially be successful at money management i want to my rich life goals if ramit was to ask me today would be to live a life of luxury without any worries 
would be a life where I can make money work for me instead of me being so out of control with my money and just being able to afford anything and everything, go on vacation and not have to worry, um, be able to have my bills paid and not have to worry, be able to make sure that the money that I'm working for doesn't feel like it's hard work. It feels, I want it to be hard work, but I want my hard work to feel fun, to feel like, you know, I'm earning this money through things that I love to do. Um, so those are my money goals. And I want to show you guys how I kind of set up my August spending. It all started with writing down and getting nitty gritty with everything that I own. So this is all the monthly payments that I have. I have my rent. I have my car insurance. I have my lawyer because I am currently a documented um, citizen or resident or whatever non-resident alien. So I don't have my citizenship and I'm working towards it. So I have to pay my lawyer. Um, I, I have my phone bill. I have my electricity, my gas for my apartment. I have four different credit cards. I have um, my Planet Fitness membership. I have my Apple Music and storage. I have my Netflix which is the only subscription that I decided to keep out of my Hulu, Disney, um, Amazon, all these other subscriptions that I had. I said, you know what, I just need one source of entertainment and that can be my Netflix. I have my Super Key, which is my um, real estate subscription in order for me to be able to show clients homes. I have to have my Super Key subscription. I have Verizon to have Wi-Fi. I have my Wiper subscription to be able to work in the environment of the office and use all of the things that they have to offer, um, such as door hangers, paper, you know, printers, making books, making like the leaf behind, using the presentation, using the Wiper tools that I need in order for me to be a successful real estate agent. And then I have two payments with a firm, which are the first one would be all the stuff that I own here in my apartment, my curtains, my rug, my coffee table, all the little things that I decided to buy in order to furnish my apartment, I'm still paying off. I know. It's insane. And I am almost done with that payment. And you know what I did? I decided to add an extra one with these fucking tickets. And I also have a maintenance fee for my TD Bank accounts that they just think that a maintenance fee is necessary every single month. Can't understand that, but whatever. And then I also like to get my nails done. So that's $80 a month because I get them done every two weeks. It's like my own little side um, self-care treatment um, because I don't do anything else. I just recently got my hair done for my birthday and it was an expense that I decided to take on because I was like, I haven't done anything for myself. Was it necessary? Absolutely not. But did it make me feel good? Yes. And those are the, the things where I'm just like, I wanna have a guilt-free spending where I can still give myself things without feeling guilty about them. I have gas that I spend on money on every month. I have food and I have parking uh, tickets that sometimes when I'm late to work and I have to park somewhere in front of the area, in front of the restaurant, and just not paying the little machine. So sometimes I get those and they end up adding up. So that's one of my side expenses that I have for this month. I think, you know, sometimes I get caught up with wanting to have such a good time with wanting to please others realistically um, and I spend money without expecting anything in return. I just want to give and I'm not quite sure if that's a bad thing or if it's a good thing but it's cost me, you know, it's, I, it's cost me in the sense of like you expect others to treat you the way you treat them and it's never that way, I've noticed. So it's time to be a little more selfish, with, especially with my finances. Um, because really that payment, I had no business taking out that, that loan, those installment payments for the tickets. But I felt like it would make me and my partner happy. I felt like it would be something that we would both enjoy. It's a lesson learned for myself to be more careful and to be able to just choose myself and choose my finances, my stability first, rather than trying to please others and trying to um, make others happy, really. Knowing all of that, then I put down the debt that I am in to this date. I have credit card debt in all four of my credit cards. I have the Affirm debt that I just got into because I wanted to splurge on the tickets and then I wanted to also furnish my home about a year ago so I'm still kind of paying that off. I have my taxes that I need to pay 
and I have my lawyer that I have to pay. Another disclosure that I want to put out there, I am not a financial advisor. I am only here sharing on my channel, my experiences, my journey, my struggles, everything um, in order for you kind of to just get an idea of where are your finances and question yourself. What can I do to take control of my finances? So please don't come for me. <laughs> you know, everybody has a different financial situation and it's important to really take control of your spending habits and where your money's going into and making sure that if you want to live a rich life one day, you know exactly how to take control of your money and put it in the right places. Currently, I don't have any savings accounts. I have a savings account and it has 0 0.01. In I have an IRA and I only have 20 bucks in there. And all these things are to be able to build my my finances to have money work for me but i don't know how to invest and i don't seek help for investing so one of my things that i've heard from a couple friends is go to somebody who can help you um figure out how to get to your goal and be able to take control of your finances um and invest seek investing tips read books so those are going to be on my list for money management. To reach my money management goal, I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to seek some help from actual financial advisors or from people who have had a struggle like this and have came out of it being rich or have came out of it knowing how to manage their money better. I wrote down the date. So some of them will say, for example, my car insurance comes out the fourth of every month. My lawyer takes out the money on the 27th of every month. My T-Mobile gets paid on the 11th of every month. Throughout the week, something gets taken out. So I put down everything that gets taken out in the first check from the 1st to the 9th, and then from the 11th to the 20th, and then from the 24th to the 30th. And then that is just three checks. So my fourth check would have to either be putting everything, like, making an advance payment of what my first check looks like and then moving on with my second check to pay my second stuff um and then moving on to pay my third check with all the things from my third week and still have that extra money to kind of just like be ahead of the game um obviously i am not perfect i know knowing that i have an extra check i'm going to want to spend money so what i've done is I've tried to work it out where all four checks are being utilized to everything that I need to be um, taken care of. Every week I totaled up what I make um, and then I kind of averaged it. So every week is different because I'm a server, but I've averaged it to around a specific number. And then from there, I split it off into everything that is going to go into the week. Currently. I am living paycheck to paycheck, so it is not a perfect scene, but I know because I'm staying on top of everything and I'm keeping the responsibility of doing what I have to do in order to come out of this being debt free, it it's the best that I feel like I could do right now in my situation. I've been checking off everything that I pay with the checks that I get. This way, I stay on top of what's getting paid, when my money's leaving, what is left over, and when I want to buy food, I write down, okay, I am left with this amount of money from the week of this paycheck after paying all my bills. So I have, let's say, $130 left. I can definitely put gas in the car, $30. So now it's $100 and I will write it down, $30 gas, back, and then we're down to $100. Keeping those tabs of my finances has really helped me because it lets me know, okay, you can't have an overdraft fee or you can't have a late fee or you can't have, you know, certain things that pop up sometimes. Your tire, you know, pops, you need some money to change it. You have to have, you know, emergency funds. So I want to be able to have that extra money for the week in case anything happens. And that's where I have to really have that discipline of not spending money on Starbucks, not spending money on breakfast before work, not spending money on my hair consistently, not spending money on 
lashes or anything whatever it is that you do that you feel is taking your money on subscriptions that you don't use on amazon if you're constantly buying stuff on amazon if you're on sheen and you're buying boxes full of clothes and then you know you're you're asking yourself well i don't really have any savings or i don't have any money or I, i'm not investing um and letting my money work for me i don't have an ira account all these things I ask myself and I say them out loud to you because I want you to be able to, if you are 25 or 20 or 15 and you want to take control of your money, start somewhere. Take advantage of the money that's coming into your, into your checking account from your job and split it off to the things you have to pay and whatever is left, maybe you can even do, uh, have your, your job take out $20 every paycheck before the check is even deposited into your checking account to a different savings account. This way, you don't even have to worry about the $20. You know, you they're already taken out. They're already in your savings. And little by little, when you don't look at it, you'll see how much it accumulates. If you want to make the money work for you, put it into an IRA account. Put it into an account that's going to help you invest money. Um, and this way, you'll be able to kind of open more possibilities of your financial growth of the rich life you want because sometimes when we have the money in our pockets we just get in the bad habits of spending it we don't make smart decisions so me giving this advice is me reiterating reiterating it back to myself if you are in the same position i am today and you want to take control of your money please do research on how you can do better healthy habits for spending money watch um, financial videos read books um and lay something out like this to be able to show you where your money's going at sometimes we like to turn a blind eye because it scares us because we don't want to know what's our debt we don't want to know how much money we're spending but it takes real courage to take advantage of free time in your day to take control of what you are putting your money to so if you're doing this i promise you you're one step closer to learning how to manage your money better and i know i'm not i'm not perfect i know sometimes things don't go the right way but this is a step forward and when things like the whole concert tickets happen it sets me back into a position where i have to reevaluate my choices and where i'm putting my money into i just know that this is temporary i know that eventually my rich life will come i just have to stay on top of my money management habits i have to be um, make healthy decisions on spending my money put myself first put my health first put my finances first making sure that i have a roof over my head making sure that i have food on my table making sure that gas is in my tank so i can get to work and I know that if I just stay on top of it, if you stay on top of it, there's no reason why you won't get to where you want to be and keep on working hard in whatever it is that you're doing. Continuously save, invest. You will get there. You're not alone. Trust me, everybody goes through shit like this. And I just wanted to share that with you in order for you to know that it takes one little step. I know it might seem like a lot, but I promise you it as soon as you start getting into it you start to see clearer where your life is headed